Welcome to a tutorial on Twine 2.1. In this video I'm going to cover how to create instant messenger mechanics using Twine and functionality as part of Harlow 2.0. The game Emily is Away uses the interface of the AOL Instant Messenger as part of its core mechanic. In order to progress the story you choose a response and you have a conversation back and forth with the character Emily. And each time Emily says something, you say something, Emily says something, you say something, and you progress through the chapters of the game. You can actually find it for free on Steam, and I recommend checking it out if you haven't already. But using Harlow 2.0, some of the new functionality, as well as some fancy CSS, we can replicate the same general design of a messenger interface and interact in the same way with the same mechanics. That is, we say something, somebody else says something, and we go back and forth, and we can style it using CSS. Let me show you that. So we see here on our initial response from us, with the arrow, you up, then it says yeah, and then we have our choice of options, similar in alignment to how it looks in Emily as a way as well, where usually we have two or three options most of the time. But in this we see we said you up, they said yeah, and then we had two different options like I said. So we choose this, and then if we scroll to chat, we can see you up, yeah, I need your help, what's wrong? We can also go back and choose how have you been, and that will get written to the chat as well. So our response, their response, our response, their response, back and forth. Well, so how are we doing this? So let's go through these different passages in turn. The first introduction passage is very straightforward. It had the text that I read out loud, as well as linked to the start passage. However, before I go to the start passage, let's look at the startup passage. So the startup passage, using the startup tag here, which means it gets run for all other passages, sets the value of the variable right to be true, which will come into play here in just a moment. And then we move over to start, from introduction to start. And start starts a number of different repeating actions here that happen throughout the rest of this Twine story. The very first thing that happens is we save our response. And we save it to the array responses. And we add you up to responses. So responses gains an entry, you up. Then we save their response to responses, yeah. And then we display the current chat log. So this is the very first thing that's happening in the start passage. We're setting responses to be an array of you up. Then we're adding to its entries, yeah. So you up and yeah are the two entries within the array responses, and then we're displaying the passage messenger. Now let's go look at messenger. Now messenger is where a lot of the work is happening. The very first thing is that this entire passage is being wrapped within a division element, a div element, with the class container. We'll go look at the style sheet in just a second. Within that, though, we're doing a number of different things. We're using the for macro, which is part of Harlow 2.0, as well as the each keyword, which is also new within Harlow 2.0. So we see for each a temporary variable with the underscore response of all of the entries of the array responses. So in start, we set responses to an array, then we added an entry to it. So when we get to displaying Messenger for the very first time, the responses array has two entries. So coming back to Messenger, we see for each entry, that is each response and responses, do some different things, do all of this. So if right is true, and remember within startup, we set it initially to be true, then we display this, and then we set right to false. And on the next response, we display this, and we set right back to true. And the use of right here is a Boolean toggle sort of device here. That is, we're setting to true or false Boolean values, and then we're alternating, toggling them back and forth to allow us to do alternating rows. Now I've also set right to be a global variable here with the dollar sign, and set it up within startup so if I wanted to, if I was going to extend the story through many, many, many passages and twists and turns, I could use right, that is, setting either the right or the left speech responses, 
And then I could change it within another passage if I wanted to, instead of alternating back and forth in a conversation, have someone say multiple things at a time, and that allows us to change that variable. So, okay, moving through responses, we initially have a right response, and then we have a left response. Well, what did that look like? That looked like this. So a right response with the arrow on the right, and then a left response with the arrow on the left, moving back and forth. So when we initially got to the start passage, we had two of them, so it worked out conveniently. Uh, you up and yeah. So we started at the right and then moved to the left. Starting at the right and moved to the left. Moving into I need your help, which was connected from the start passage, we've seen the same general response again. We're saving our response, saving their response, and displaying the current chat log each time we move to a different passage. However, in this case, and because of the way I arranged the story, we're actually saving the passage's name using the passage macro as our response. Now, I've set this up this way so we could look at examining the story from the point of view of the, pers of the player and their responses in the order. So the start passage points to the passages, I need your help, and the passages, how have you been? And as you can see, I need your help, and how have you been? Which have the same content at the moment. And so I've set this up this way, so all we have to worry about, if we wanted to extend the story, is writing this each time, using the alignment markdown as part of Harlow. So we have left alignment, something, right alignment, something, and then close the alignment. And as you saw, it was I need your help and how have you been right here on the left and the right aligned that way. And so all we need to do in the story now, as long as we just copy this bit of code into each new passage, is all we have to worry about is writing passages names, links to other passages as the player response and then within each of them changing the other response, their response. In this case it's what's wrong, we could change it to a number of different things and moving back and forth as well as if we wanted someone to say things multiple times like the player or the other person we can just change the variable right each time to whatever true if we wanted it to not repeat as much. So in this way we can move back and forth alternating responses you up, yeah, right, and left from us to them and the same general mechanic as Emily is away, as well as use an array here of responses and add to it by adding another array to responses, to add entries to responses. And then in using the display macro in the messenger passage, alternate back and forth and use CSS to style the responses with the little arrows. Now, given we've looked at the code with Entwine, let's go look at the CSS, the story style sheet. To get to the story style sheet, we click on the name of the story, as I did right here, and then we click on Edit Story, story Style Sheet. And we see we have a number of different things going on here. Now, the bubble right after, bubble left after, can pretty easily be found by Googling CSS bubbles. There are a number of different examples online that show you different ways of approaching this. Um, I went and grabbed one just so we could demonstrate how to do this here, but they're of course free to find. However, the thing here, our sort of messenger interface is container. Now remember, within messenger was class container, which contained our entire thread, our chat thread. So, looking at the story style sheet, our container has a minimum height of 300 pixel and a maximum height of 300 pixels, which means that it starts at 300 pixels and it won't grow any bigger. So as we add content to it, the div element, the division element, won't actually grow any bigger. As well as we set a background color to white, border to light blue, we add some padding. And then we do two new things here, overflow y scroll, which is to say as we add things to the thread using the for macro, we want the scroll bar so we can scroll up and down Y. However, if we accidentally add too much for the X, we'll just go ahead and hide it so we don't see the scroll bar there. And so it mimics a similar messenger interface where we can scroll up and down, but we're not really scrolling left and right. As well as I have set a right class to be sort of a light blue color and set a left to gray. 
as we saw here, sort of a light bluish and then a gray. And then everything else is the CSS, which you are free to copy from this proof copy, which will be in the description of this YouTube video. And so we see the start here of a similar mechanics to Emily is Away, using existing functionality in Harlow 2.0, primarily the for macro in the each keyword, combined with using arrays, responses, and then adding two responses, and the display macro. And of course we're tracking player responses here as links to new passages, allowing us to map it out. So we see initial start, and then depending on how the player picks, the editor view of Twine here would expand outward in however direction you wanted it to go, as well as possibly converging back, depending of course on how you set up the links between passages. But this is a way to mimic an instant messenger mechanics similar to the game Emily is Away, which again I recommend if you go, you can go check it out on Steam for free. Um, but like I said, here are different ways to approaching this. Of course I did it the player way, you could do it a number of different ways. Uh, but using functionality that's part of Harlow 2.0, that's part of Twine 2.1. Thanks for watching.